three, two. Good day from beautiful St. Martin. My name is Lizanne Charles and I'm joined by Clara Reyes. Um, we're here as a part of UniArte Plus 6 platform. So UniArte made an open call in 2021 called UniArte Plus 6 to all creatives in the Caribbean to introduce selected artists and their work to the world. All chosen artists submitted an art proposal and delivered either an insight of their process or a result. All of this artwork will be published in January 2022 on UniArte's online platform and social media. Uh, so in addition to myself, Lizanne Charles from Save on St. Martin, we have persons from Aruba, Curacao, Jamaica, Venezuela and Aruba, Barbados and also Curacao again. So basically when I heard about this proposal, I wanted to talk about art development on the SSS Islands and I thought who better could I have to have this candid conversation about art as a practice with than my muse, than <laughs> my mentor, my friend, uh, my co-producer, um, uh, my singer, because we did a calypso together, like we've worked with each other in all various forms yes, of the art. that's true. So I thought who better to have this conversation about art development on the SSS Islands with than you. Clara Reyes, I'm going to give you a moment to just introduce yourself, just say a little something short uh, to the audience about who you are and what you do. Oh, Clara Reyes, who am I? You know, half the time I don't even know, but I know I love art, I love the experience of it, I love what it brings to me, and I love what I've seen it bring to other people, and I say I'm like that person that has committed myself to really dig as deep as I can and as wide as I can into what it means to be artist and artist expression and, and finding voice. So in every myriad of form, you know, movement, dance, poetry, spoken words, silence, you know, how you say, uh, cultural, spiritual, all of the context, what does it mean to be that person? So that's what I do. I just simply yeah. sit down and dig and yeah. figure it out as I go yeah. and tell stories along the way. And for me, I feel like like a lot of what you just said encompassed who I became, but also as a result of you. Because like I started in uh, art, sort of like with my grandmother, like um, doing performances in her clubs and all this kind of stuff. And then started writing my own poetry, started writing my own songs. But like really, when I met you, then um, and I, I, you probably don't even remember when I met you, but. Or I don't know, but like, let's say we have the same story. Okay, go we ahead. We were performing a poem on the cultural center, and I was like, "Who is that person? We're gonna work together." And I think I went, I straight went to you after the show. I don't ever introduce myself to you, but I know I wanted to work with you. Right, and and for me, like I didn't meet meet you, but I knew of you like from before. But of course, then I saw you with the first vagina monologues okay. conversation, and like for me, even that just blew my mind because of the way that you presented that whole story it was like all of these different people who contributed their experiences and their stories so it moved my art i felt like from beyond poetry um to like a broader way of presenting an emotion presenting a story as well okay. so that's where i first saw you but then indeed like that that's when we first met like you just came up to me like oh we're gonna work together and i was like yeah we're gonna work <laughs> together like finally you know Mm -hmm. um but but also I do, like because of you i thought like okay there's so many different ways to bring a story and to and to connect and i remember one of the things that you told me way, two things i remember that oh you told God. me way back you said like lizanne art is transformative if you share the message in a real way like it will do something to people so that was one and then i remember when we were teaching together you said you're like i try to give my students as much rocks in their pockets i'm paraphrasing mm -hmm. right but rocks in their pockets so that when they leave they have something to take with them like of who they are of right. who saint martin is you know of their experience in saint martin so i was wondering if you could maybe just uh touch on that a little bit more like where did you come to those um thoughts or philosophies um and because for me they impacted me really deeply and it impacted also the way that i engage with uh young people engage with my own work so I was wondering, yeah, can you touch on those two things? Okay, so if I have to think about it, I think when I see persons and you get to see them, you get to see their talent, all of a sudden you realize this person is has something. And I feel like in a lot of ways my journey has been to help people unlock that person in them to tell their voice, to tell their story. So like for instance you you were just a complete product you were there you were this being 
you were saying all of these words that reverberated in my belly and to me I wanted to be a part of that for me as well you know that we have something to talk about there's something about us and then at the time I wasn't thinking specifically Sim Martin but the longer I stayed here and I kept hearing Sim Martin has no culture Sim Martin have, doesn't have this Saint Martin. so like the whole idea of who Sim Martin is as a people who we are this idea that we had nothing to say mm -hmm. was something that really bothered me. Yep. And so for that reason, I knew that once they leave St. Martin, they're going to be told that plus more. Mm -hmm. and, they, and then who they are will never get a chance to manifest. Right. So that was why I think I'm very good at finding people's voices, you know, unlocking tools, giving mm -hmm. them instruments with which they can release that person that is so profound. So in that case, and then it was giving them like vehicles, tools, you know, like all the, the, the little tricks, like not tricks necessarily, but all the skill sets needed to own it. Yeah, I'm laughing because when you talk about the owning, <laughs> I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but so like I'm not a performance poet. I'm not a spoken word artist. I am a reader. I okay. read poetry. So we did this production <laughs> together with, you know, a Boudoir Secret. Right. And um, I had this, this poem um, I never knew and the people weren't performing it the way I wanted to. So you said, okay, well, fine, you have to do it. And I was like, okay, but I have to read. And you were like, you are not reading this poem. Like, you have to rem you memorize it. You have to embody it. You have to, and like, really, like, I think, like, that's one of the things that you've always been responsible. Well, not responsible, but you know what I mean? You've always encouraged and almost sometimes forced me to stretch myself beyond my comfort zone. Because like, you the know, art so is bigger than all of us. It's, it's not so much we owe it. Right, like you say that all the time. We owe it to the to story, to the art, to the yes. people. Yes, like we're literally, there's something that's running through all of us as hum human people, you know? And I don't know what it is, I can't tell mm -hmm. you. I mean, one time I read this line, Blood Memory by Martha Graham, you know? But there is, there is something huge like every poem is a standalone. Once it leaves you, yeah, yeah. people are gonna read it and have their own interaction with it. So is this the we're that re like we're really truly the vessel of something as mm -hmm. huge? And for me, that's the creative power of God. You know, like the yeah, God yeah, manifesting yeah. His presence through us. That whole idea of creating something that you know you you bring it out and it stands alone and it's a dense something yeah. that impacts and shifts and moves people and transcends the test of time mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. think of great works of art that people keep singing you know melodies instruments yeah. stuff is huge than all of us and maybe that's what I see in people that there's this something that has to get out and you have to mm -hmm, honor mm -hmm. that you can't cheat that right 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 you know? And I, I, I definitely used to cheat it. Like I feel like, um, and even up until recently, because as you know, I took like a sabbatical off from work. Like I, I was feeling overwhelmed. And then I did like an art intensive with a lady from Barbados and you know, really did like stuff like with body and then getting into your body and getting into your belly and into your, all the parts of you that you're uncomfortable with. Um, so I, I agree with you that, you know, like that people sometimes um, don't want to go there. And I know we've had this conversation often about like what it would take sometimes to take art and the, the artist industry sort of on St. Martin to the next level. And one of the things is that you and I have collaborated a lot over the years, um, but sometimes I feel like on St. Martin, there isn't or there's not an art community. Like we connect sometimes people, but I feel like we don't always get together. Like, and I wonder like from your perception, why do you think that is? Because there, there are a lot of creators on St. Martin. So like even when people say like, oh, St. Martin has no culture, Seba has no culture, you know. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, these are islands with a lot of history and with a lot of creators where people were still creating history. And always creating. So the question was, why do you think? Yeah, we don't get together more as artists and really collaborate and, and sort of push our stories and our, and our experiences together. Like, the, the most I can think about of it happening is with you in a lot of those productions. I think people are still finding voice. Growing up in a place where no one told you that when you sing a song, it's more than just a sound. Mm -hmm. So all you know is the sound of the voice. But when you know that the sound of the voice can bring down mountains, can move water, can make trees, 
when you so if you don't have somebody telling you you are more than just the sound that you think you're making mm -hmm. your sound has a frequency that can connect so I feel that's what I keep telling people and when I meet people dancers like I see a bunch of dancers dancing and they're just dancing like on this very physical level they don't realize that they're shifting space they're moving air like how the picture they make in space is a very telling story so until you don't have a teacher that tells you that mm -hmm. It's just shapes, pretty shapes, nice designs, you know, so you don't get a chance to delve deeper. Right, so right. So I think you need someone, and how did I get that person? I don't know. Because from small, I've, I've always been very, like, there. Like, I could hear the mm -hmm, stuff, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know? And from beginning, right, right away, you had a responsibility to do it well and, right. and, and, and offer it well, like really like an offering. Mm -hmm. I think one of the most resounding words I remember was like, the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. Mm -hmm. They didn't fall along by themselves. Yeah, they fall yeah, along yeah. because there was purpose in the voice. Mm -hmm. And there was purpose in the frequency. And they, they meant to mm -hmm. sing to, to such a place that it vibrated and brought the walls down. Yeah. Um, I was speaking to this guy from Estonia the other day, and then they were talking about Estonia had this, the singing revolution, that they got their independence through everybody singing. They would, they would gather thousands, you know, millions of people in the square in Estonia, and that was the transition that brought them, you know, for, uh, you know when the Eastern Bloc was falling mm -hmm, and all mm -hmm, this stuff mm -hmm. was happening. So they have this thing called, they're the singing revolution, that people just came together in voices yeah, I hope that answered the question. Yeah, yeah, but I also wonder because, like, you know, going back to this idea of voice, like, again, you know, like, for me, and I, I, like, in preparing for this conversation, I realized, like, like, if people say, like, what kind of artist are you, it's very hard for me to say because I've dabbled, and so, I mean, I'm a poet, I, I feel that, and, and that's where I, I find myself, but, like, you know, I've written Calypso's, Road March, I've done theat theatrical productions with you, I've written, like, um, books, you know, uh, edited uh, memoirs, so I've done, like, all these different things, but it all goes back, I think, to my beginning still, like, and, and something that my grandmother handed on to me. But I will say this, because it comes down to this idea of finding voice. Like, my grandmother had very rigid ideas about how you perform, right, and how you sound, and there was no freedom in that. And I think, indeed, like, when I, I, when I came to St. Martin and when I encountered you and, you know, like, I felt like you were like, okay, no, but you have a voice like what what are you trying to say what is your written and you know one of the conversations that i keep having is like well how do i know what's my real voice like what is my po i don't want to talk in poet's voice what is my real voice I know. But, so how, how do we then we have all these young people who are creating who are doing things or who may be in different organizations but still creating in a very rigid way how 